Hey guys, welcome back. This is part two of our volleyball positioning video. Last time on part one, we focused a lot about where you should be standing and what position you should be playing. Today, what we're gonna be focusing on is a little bit more tactful. If you've ever been in a match and not known where you're supposed to be, this is gonna be a great video for you. This video today is mainly going to be focusing on defensive positioning based on block calls and in serve receive. Before we get going, please, 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 go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Go ahead and give us a like. Comment if you like something or if you don't like something so that we know that we can make more content for you. The last video, we talked a lot about where you should be playing, whether it's left or right, or if you should be a blocker or a defender. This video is going to be focusing on where you should be standing and what different kinds of plays you can run while on defense. While I'm explaining these, we're also going to be giving you really, really good examples of people running these types of plays. And hopefully you can take a look at where the blocker is lining up and where the defender is lining up. Most of the time we're going to be staying in that position, but we also have a couple of plays where we mislead the offense a little bit and we move to a new position after the set. The first one that we're gonna be talking about is line defense. More than likely, if you are playing whatever level, whether it's beginner or pro, then you are going to represent this call with holding up a one, or for easy explanation, a line. If you are the blocker, then you are going to be in charge of taking away that attacker's line attack. If they hit it over you like a line shot, then that's something we're willing to give up right now. And since the blocker is taking the line, then that means that the defender has to sit in the cross court. So all we're doing is we're separating the court into responsibilities. So for a one block or a line block, the blocker's responsibility is taking the line and the defender's responsibility is taking the cross. The next block or play we have is a two, or for easy explanation, an angle block. An angle block is going to be the exact opposite of what the line block is, where the blocker is going to set themselves up so that if the attacker hits, then they would take away the cross court from that attacker. For a two block or an angle block, the blocker will be taking cross court and the defender will be taking line. Sorry for interrupting your beautiful viewing experience, but I just wanted to take a minute to tell you about Volley Chat. Volley Chat, Get Better at Beach Volleyball is our Facebook group where we talk about everything beach volleyball. So any deep burning beach volleyball questions, gossip, and ways to get better, what drills to do, and advice from high-level professionals, high-level coaches, and FIVB refs. We're talking about all of that on Volley Chat, Get Better at Beach Volleyball. You can find it by typing in www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash better at beach. We hope to see you there, join the conversation, and you'll be talking directly with me and everybody at Better at Beach. So when we're talking about the basic defensive plays that you should be running, ones and twos are really, really good to run, okay? Most of the time, if you're a beginner and eat intermediate, or even if you're playing in open level tournaments, those are the types of blocks that you're going to be running and you're going to be seeing. So it's really, really important when you are running a one or a two block that you are being very disciplined to taking away what your responsibility is. Especially if you are a beginner, the worst thing that you can do is try to guess where this attacker is going. Think about your responsibilities, whether you're the blocker or the defender, and put yourself in a position to win points based on that system that you have decided to play. Once you start trying to guess, then that system doesn't really matter anymore. As we're moving forward, there are a couple of different plays that you can run that can kind of mess with the offense a little bit more than a standard one and a two block. And just because we're using fingers to call out, the next two blocks that we're gonna be calling are a four block and a three block. A four block is where the blocker and the defender are going to be working together, but they're going to be switching positions right before the attack occurs. The blocker is going to line up as if they are taking the line attack from the attacker, which means that the defender should be sitting in the angle. And right before the contact happens, those two players are going to switch positions, which means 
that the blocker is now, if they were blocking line, they're going to be jumping into the angle, taking away the cross court hit, and at the same time, the defender is going to be moving from cross court to the line to pick up any high lines or any shots that might go towards the line. A three block is the opposite. A three block is where the blocker is acting like they are taking cross and the defender is acting like they're taking line. And then at contact, they are going to switch where the blocker is going to take away the line hit and the defender is going to run to pick up that cut shot. Whenever you're running a three or a four, it's important for the blocker and the defender to be on the same page. If the defender moves to the line before the blocker makes their move, or if the blocker makes their move and the defender doesn't move in time, then more than likely you're going to lose that point. It's important for those defenders and blockers to make this move together as a team in order to disguise this move as much as possible. If you wanna be very effective at making this a disguised play, then one thing that I suggest is by giving a pre-move to your final move. I know that's kind of weird to say. For instance, if I am blocking in the line and I plan on running a three block, which means that I'm gonna show that I'm going to be blocking cross, then it's a good idea to make my move into the cross court so that that attacker can see me and then I'm going to dive back to the line. All right, if the blocker and the defender can get this first fake to happen at the same time, then you're more than likely going to trick that attacker into hitting the ball right into your lap. So now we've gone through a one block, which is line, an angle block, which is two, a three block, which is acting like you're blocking cross and then blocking the line, and a four block, which is acting like you're blocking line and then blocking cross. There is one more call that we see a lot, especially at middle levels, beginner to intermediate or open, and that is sometimes we decide not to block the ball. Normally a closed fist means that we are not blocking the ball. But if you remember from our video in part one, just because we aren't blocking the ball doesn't mean that we don't need to be at the net. So regardless of what you're doing, make sure that you assign some call, whether it's a one, a two, a no block, whatever you decide to do for that specific player that you're playing against, and then make sure you keep to that assignment. Okay, and what that means is that the next thing we have to talk about is if we don't need to be blocking, where should I go? Or where should I pull off and play defense? And that is going to tell, your hands are going to tell you what you should be covering. Okay, so for instance, if I'm blocking line, that means that I am responsible for the line. So even if my attacker is at the net and he is going to swing, then obviously I'm gonna block. But if that attacker gets held off the net, and they don't have the ability to hit with power, then I'm going to pull off the net, but I'm still responsible for my call. Whenever we're holding up hand signals, it's very obvious as to what you are responsible for because that's what you would be taking away. So if you hold up a four and you would end in the angle, then that means if you decide to pull, you should pull to cover that angle. It does get a little tricky when we decide that we're not going to block or we hold up the fist, because now there can be some confusion as to what side you are pulling to. I think the easiest thing to do is to go ahead and decide that no matter who you are not blocking when you hold up the fist, that you should pull directly back into their line. Okay, that's a conversation that you're going to have to have with the defender or your partner before you start playing. And it can go as simple as, hey, if I say that I'm not blocking, then that means that I'm just gonna pull back to their line. These videos and ideas and concepts can literally be endless. 
And we made this video because we've had a lot of people asking questions about what type of position they should be playing, whether they should be a left side or a right side, whether they should be in a, a blocker or a defender. And they're also wondering what all these hand signals mean. Okay, I think that we've covered that all up. If you have some confusion, please leave us a comment or go to Volley Chat and ask us a couple questions. And if you have a deeper question, please let us know. We are always looking for more content that we can create that can help you guys get better at beach volleyball. We don't do this for us, we do it for you guys. So please leave some comments, leave some recommendations so that we can keep bringing you guys the content that you deserve.